So it finishes Bodo Glimp 2, Celtic 0, and it's another humbling European experience for Celtic. Finally, uh, sorry, running out 5-1 losers overall, and yeah, lessons to be learned and all that stuff, but a really disappointing night overall for Angie's men. This is Tino with this, the Final Whistle Show. I'm joined by Joe and James. Joe, I'll come to you first. What was your take on tonight? Eh, uh, really disappointing. Eh, uh, I thought... I thought we were really flat. It just reminded me of uh, Livingston playing in Astro Park. Didn't know that they were ever going to score. Really cheap goals have lost. And against a team we maybe should be doing better against. Um, but yeah, just really disappointed. Yeah. I think there's no doubt Bodo are a decent side, but I wonder just how much we made them look good. James, what was your tale of the night? I, I think you've got to split it in two, you know, in terms of where we are, where we were expected to be this time last year. So that being not too first, I'll worry about Europe next year for Ange. Uh, the other half of it is on the night, players that were asked to do a job and given an opportunity to bag first team football for Celtic didn't show up. So yeah, maybe we shouldn't be here, but you're here now, do the job. Yeah, I think so. Um, so obviously the, the big talking point pre-match was that Shock of a lineup. I think it was just so bizarre, and often we put out uh, what we think the start lineup will be. We never caught that tonight. We never got one out, and I'm glad because we'd have been miles off it. Um, there was just so many changes that people weren't expecting. So six changes from the team that took to the field last Thursday, uh, mostly defensive. So uh, let me get this right: Ralston, uh, Welsh is in, Scales is in, um, in the midfield. Beat on starts and captains the team. Um, up top, you've got. Forrest coming back in, Jack and Marcus that never featured as well. He's also persevered with the two number 10s, which really glaringly didn't work last week. And I think, I mean, is that stubbornness by Andrew? Joe? What, you know, what's your take on him going for that again after he's seen how badly it worked last week? Uh, you could argue stubbornness because maybe I think all the criticism was sort of heading towards his way because he played them both last week. And I think a lot of the success that Bodo Glimt got last week was playing through our midfield. You saw asking that again tonight, but maybe I think so. I, I think there was that was partly to do with it because I can see either one of Rogic or O'Reilly starting on Sunday. So I don't think it was a case of he's going to play. I mean, the three players that were on the bench were McCarthy, McGregor, and Hattie. So I don't mm. think it was a case. I don't think Rogic or O'Reilly weren't going to play on Sunday, and it was a case of. We'll play them now because they won't get much a run out then. So mm. I, I don't know, but it just it just didn't work again. It was just really, really poor. Yeah. James, how disappointed were you? I was going to say particularly in Rodic, but neither he or O'Reilly showed up well, did they? O'Reilly showed he's stepping up a level and this is just one too soon for him. He stepped up into, you know, 60,000 fans, SPFL. He's handled that, no problem. Titan Castle, what have you. This is a step up too much from just this early in his development, and that's fine. You can forgive a young boy for, for that. You can't forgive Rogic for that. For me, Rogic hasn't come back from his international break with Australia. He's not kicked a ball. He's doing all these stupid, frustrating jumps when he gets beat off a ball, beat really easy, sloppy possession, sloppy passing, the whole lot. You know, they kind of, he's the Rogic tonight, was the Rogic you weren't minding losing to Qatar, and that's criminal. Yeah. What do you think, James, on suggestions online that? And you showing a bit of, uh, you know, picking my face here, but arrogance for that team, you know. No, nah, I don't think so. No, I mean to to try and second guess him. I, I think you know, knowing what we know about Ange, you'd have been quite confident that he was going to go in there with close to his strongest team and have a proper go at this. He's done the opposite there tonight. <sighs> he would never say it, and he would never even bring it into the dressing room. But I think it shows where his head's at in terms of concentration. I mentioned last week that the double number 10 was a bit experiment, experimental to see if it would work for us and then you'll bring it into the uh, the strategy going forward, tactics going forward. It obviously didn't work. He's played them again. He's also played an array of players who aren't first-team football. I said before the game, he was saying to these guys, you want to play first 11, here's a chance. But, you know, you don't do that if you're going all out to win the game. If you're going out all out to win the game, Tati's there, Jota's there, Abada's there, McGregor's certainly there. McGregor not starting tells you where his head's at with that tie. So I don't think it's arrogance. I don't think he's saying, I can beat you with 
anyone because you showed last week that we can't. You know, we had to have our strongest team to have a chance tonight. It's not arrogance. It's maybe just this isn't where the focus is at. Yeah. Do you know I mean, as James mentioned there, the fact that McGregor's and Jota's and Hatati's and Juranovic is all starting the bench, they're, you know, they're, I've maybe rhymed off four of our best players there, if not the four best players in the team. The very fact that they're not starting, I suppose it tells you that Ange is prioritising Sunday. Um, and maybe a lot of fans will be okay with that and a lot of fans won't. Where do you stand on it yourself? I mean, I don't know if it was just to give myself a wee bit of hope because I really wanted them to take that seriously. I didn't want... It, obviously, the league is really important and, you know, we need to win the league because there's so much reward that gets out of winning the league. But I really wanted this to have, to run, to have a run in the tournament. I wanted this yeah. to go far. I wanted this to play against these teams who are... I mean, on paper, before we were speaking it before we went live... Oh, we were expecting to be on paper. We were expecting to beat this team because yeah. they're from Norway. They weren't. I mean, they weren't on a level. They're not as clearly not as big a club in terms of fan base. Um, it's just it's a team that we would be expecting to beat on paper. And if you look at the other teams in that tournament, I mean, you're going out of that sort of fancy in your chances. But if what? We've, we've clearly got absolutely no chance of really competing in the Champions League, competing in Europe, if we can't beat teams who, on paper, we're really expecting to beat. And it's, I think it's a lot of it's our own undoing. Like we're the only, I think we're our own worst enemy a lot of the time because we think we're going to walk over these teams and we're just yeah. not. I think the, you know, the big um, eye opener will be how far Bodo progress in this tournament or not you know it'll be interesting to see how they fare over the piece and I think I think all three of us were there last week at the game at Celtic Park and it was a pretty tough watch you know for the most part but the frustration for me is that you know we'll cover the first half here and we'll look at you know some of the kind of key points but the very fact that when Ange made those changes at halftime and it's not wholesale changes it's two changes he brings McGregor and he brings a bad in we were far better and actually we we got them in the back foot potentially for the first time in the whole tie and that's the frustration for me just one or two tweaks to the system, one or two tweaks to personnel. And we could have had them in the ropes, James. And I just think that's really disappointing. Listen, we don't want to be at the Conference League. We don't want that to be our level moving forward. But we're here now. And when you're here, I think you've got to make the most of it and show up as well as you can. And I was disappointed. I understand prioritising things. And some people have said, let's just dismiss Europe this season. But I think any time a Celtic team takes to the, the field, you always want them to, to show up as best they can. And... That was far from the case tonight. Yeah, I mean, putting a Celtic team out that doesn't compete or can't compete just should never be in our, our makeup. It isn't in our makeup and it shouldn't be tolerated. Um, and it, like you're saying, it was two simple changes. So I've said right from the get go, the league's a priority. But you're, you're here now and two small changes, less wholesale changes of second string players would have put you in a far better place to, to go out and compete in that tie tonight. And we didn't. Yeah. Um, in terms of the, you know, on the pitch action, Joe, so, you know, but we know we've got a sketchy lineup. Maybe the Skills v Taylor argument's been put to bed tonight. I thought Liam Skills was so, so disappointing. I do like Stephen Welsh, but I also think he really struggled tonight. And, you know, a few others. And based on that first half, we just could not get our foot in the ball, could we? We couldn't. Um, I, I thought, I agree with you with Skills. I thought Skills was really poor. Um, you look at it, on the flip side, I mean, every time Anthony Nelson gets the ball, it's a forward pass, it's a forward thinking decision, albeit he did lose the ball a couple of times now. It wasn't the best conditions to sort of keep the ball because it was really windy, I think it was really, the pitch was really fast, it didn't really suit players that are, you know, that don't have the best first touch, because if you don't get the best first touch, you just won't get away with it. But every time Liam Scales get the ball, it never looked like he was going to make a move forward. Every time it was a safe pass back, it was almost as if he was so panicky about making a mistake. He was so desperate not to make a mistake that at yeah. all costs, he would just take the safe option. And when you're two goals behind in a really big cup tie, that is like the complete opposite of what you're meant to be doing. Yeah. And you'll go to far more intimidating, intimidating places than, than yeah. Bodo. You know, if you're going to make it at the top level at Celtic and if you're going to get to where we want to be as a club, He'll face the inner test in that, James, and I just think that he never stood up when there was a chance there. I'm sure these are the kind of guys that, you know, have been training at Lennox Town over the last 
two, three, four months even thinking, you know, I, I think I'm worth a chance here. You know, I think I deserve a shout. You know, him and, you know, Welsh should be, two, you know, the two main contenders for that. And they'll, they'll just fall right back down to the, the pecking order now. And even before tonight, I could maybe have some sympathy with that or even even agree with it. You'd be thinking, oh, those guys can count themselves unlucky to be kept out by Staffel, by Taylor, etc. And then you see that and you go, you're nowhere near it, mate, you know. Um, if Now you're actually thinking, I can't actually rely on you if one of those guys gets injured. So you're looking towards summer transfer windows and things like that. Not to write guys off. Guys can develop, you know, and go on a, go on a journey and improve themselves. But they're a good, good way off the pace. Yeah, and on that very note, so I think Scales is mostly at fault, but Welsh has played his part in the first goal we've conceded. I've clocked it around about nine minutes. Beaton's week as well, you have to say, in the middle. It's a poor, yeah, poor, poor yeah, bad Beaton's week. There's a lot um, of that ball just coming flying straight back to the defence, you know? Yeah, several guys at fault, and it's uh, it's your man Saul back, and he's had a good game last week. He's, you know, scored last week, didn't he? Yeah. 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 And he scored yeah. again tonight, but it, it's far too easy. He signposted it. You know what he's linked to, curl it. It's a real kind of... Obvious finish, if that's the right word. And Aye. Scales is just, he's been so far off him. It's, it's show, untrue. show him the line. I mean, if, if Scales is or isn't a left back, he's certainly trained as a left back. He's had coaches that have coached him as a left back. Show him the line, don't show him inside. And he's just got right inside him, got the yard and curled it. You know, it's a good finish and all that stuff, but Scales is just really, really weak there for me. Yeah. Just a separate point while I remember. Did Joe Hart have his tracky top on under his goalie top? I think he did his oh. tracky top, his uh, thermal vest, and his berkhouse. <laughs> I think it was game it. over. It was game over when that happened for me. I just <laughs> looked at it. And I just thought, oh, it's going to be one of those ones that's going to be plastered all over Twitter, and oh, just that was the downfall for me. There was a corner kick. I think before they even scored their first goal, where Hart has come out flapping. Um, I think it's not only has it been definitely inside his six yard box. I think it's about four yards out. He's gone with the big outstretched yeah. arms. Yeah, he's got nowhere mm-hmm. near it. And I think Angel Hart's been exceptional. He's a big character. He's a leader in that dressing room. He's phenomenal as a short stopper, and he had a really good stop in the first half. Uh, from who was it? Counter attack, wasn't it? Yeah, it was when um, he flies across. I done really well, you know. And there's no I, doubt that's a strong part of his game. <laughs> I don't know how much he can improve at this age. I'd like to think he's a guy who will always, you know, be learning and getting better. But I think for us to improve all round, he's got to improve on that side of his game because we've spoken at length now about the. The set piece issues, particularly you know the weekend past it against Dundee, and you could argue some you know ones that he should and shouldn't come for. He's got to come out for that one, James, hasn't he? He's got to take command. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge, huge Hart fan, but you can't have a, a one or two dimensional goalie. You know he's got to have the, the whole set. People, you know, in Scottish media and some Celtic fans harp for the glory days of Craig Gordon, great shortstopper, awful at everything else, mm. and Hart's good at leading. He's great shortstopper. He's, he's definitely not uh, impressing us in the cross ball situation. So we've got to get uh, Stevie Woods into that if we're, if we're not looking towards, well, the young goalie and then you know maybe a backup in the summer. I want Hart to be there, but he's got to get better at the cross balls for sure. Yeah. Um, in terms of the rest of the first half, Joe, is there any real highlights? I thought we started to play a wee bit better towards the 40, 41st, 42nd minute. There was that decent chance for Starfelt come in from a, a decent O'Reilly free kick, you know, curled it in a nice area. Don't know if he was offside or not. I couldn't see if the line all flagged. Um, but he's not he's not connected to finish well either. But at that point, we were having a wee spell of possession. Was it more encouraging for you or was that just, you know, a token gesture given that we were seriously outclassed at that time? I did think we, we improved. I mean, I don't, to be honest, I don't think we could have got any worse. Just the way we were playing, we were really back to the wall stuff until oh, at least the 30th minute, 35th minute. And mm-hmm. then we started to maybe kick on a wee bit. Jack and Marcus had the header that never really troubled yeah. the keeper at all. We just went straight at him. But with Starfield's chance, he doesn't really know. I don't think he knows he's offside. And you don't. I, I don't think, think especially, it maybe it's a lack of experience of playing in these games, but... I mean, you played the whistle. I mean, you get VAR, but maybe you don't have in Scotland, but you played the whistle. Imagine you're marginally on side. They're going to have a look at it if it's really that tight. Yeah. Now, maybe, maybe it was just a bad finish, and you can't really blame Starfelt from... It's not as if he's stopped because he's heard the whistle. Mm. It's, just, it's just poor finishing. And I think it's... We've not really scored a lot of goals. I think he's scored yet for Celtic, has he? I'm not like sure if he has, but it, it was certainly a, 
a big chance. And you know, seeing these games where you're up against it and you're being outplayed, you'll still get chances. And geez, I'm fed up saying goals change games. It's the biggest cliche out there, but they do. And if you score that at half time or just get into half time, you get a huge love for the second half. Yeah. And I mean, even just in terms of their goalkeeper, I believe he's that was his European debut. What's his name? Joshua Smith. Smiths. Um, mm-hmm. Their goal they get booked for time wasting. Uh, last week and that real time out for tonight so you've got a chance to really test a guy who might have been nervous or anxious or whatever and we've really not the, the Jack and Marcus header you mentioned Joe I think it was Ralston that managed to do well to get a cross out but it's powder for a feather it, you know it's not a threat at all yeah Starfield was not even hitting the target so for all the huffing and puffing we've not tested this guy at all and by that point he settles into the second half and it's it's done and dusted yeah. um as just as, men- a wee, as a wee tech point button there wasn't any Var there tonight, Joe? They're not doing it in this round, but there was oh, was not. But there was Rob McLean referee who gave who gave it his offside, <laughs> like straight on it. And I, I don't yeah, think it was offside. They should be scoring it anyway. Yeah, I think Starfield has just got to do better, and then you can worry about if you're offside or not. Um, so I mentioned that he's made the changes at half time. So the the double ten of of O'Reilly and Rogic has not been working. They come out and McGregor and Abada step in. I think he's gone to a 4 2 3 one. I think that was a suggestion. So, Beaton and McGregor sitting deeper with Forrest to the left, Maeda kind of through the middle and Abada on the right, and then Jack and Marcus right up top. And I have to say, it was evident right from the off, particularly just with McGregor setting the tempo, that it did improve things, James. It did, even, you know, from the point of view that, you know, that guy... What was the number nine's name that scored the first goal? So back in. So back in. He was bullying scales a wee bit because he was on a bad game and you saw him giving him a bit of mouth. And within two minutes of that, McGregor went and put one on him, took a booking. Even mm-hmm. just that kind of setting the tone of, we might go out, but you're not going to run over the top of us kind mm-hmm. of stuff. So it, it changed the game entirely. Um, there was just much more cohesion between the players. You know, that the, the gaps between defence, midfield and forward in the first half compared to the second you know, it was very stark, so that that bridging the gap of the four two three one definitely helped. And you know, we put ourselves in a chance there. Yeah, Joe, it was a lot livelier, wasn't it? And I think even not everything came off for him, of course, but Abada made a difference with some he's running. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I thought it definitely was a lot better. It looked they played at a lot more pace, a lot more structure to the play. You know, I, I think your natural instinct is, you know, McGregor is really as the spine of that team. Every good bit of play comes from him. Our, pattern, our patterns of play really comes through McGregor. I mean, every time he gets the ball, you know, it, there's just that, there's an idea behind it, there's a rhythm behind it, and he sets that. And it, it did make a difference. Because, and I think particularly because, because of how poor, poorly Beaton played in the first half, in terms of ball retention, Rogic and O'Reilly didn't really help him, to be fair, with their movement. But I don't know, I... It's still, it was a risk they had to take because they were needing three goals. I mean, it was really throwing everything at it at the end. They didn't really have anything to lose if they conceded another goal. But I just I just thought, Abada did make a difference again when he came on. The direct runs really is something that Forrest just isn't offering at all this season. Yeah. Um, and it definitely made a difference, but still just not yeah. enough at all. Um... And James, we've kind of touched on it. Don't don't want to kick a man when he's down and all that stuff, particularly such a servant to the club. But James Forrest is off it at the moment. He is. Um, I, I, I wouldn't dwell too much on it because I think James he knows it. I think he's come into a team that is much faster paced than the team they went out of. And he's come in with less pace than he left the last team. It's a lot of a, it's a big gap for him to bridge and I don't think he's going to get there. So good servant to the club. Um First half was really, really frustrating. Second half of the second goal, he just lets the guy go. And then the guy manages to stroll it to a 18-yard box, spread it to his left, and then meet the cross. There's plenty of time for James to uh, close the gap there and doesn't. So um, I wouldn't dwell on it. I think it's just a, a tough point in any player's career, especially one that served us so well. Yeah, I, I blame Beaton. Uh, for the goal, mostly. Um, that was his direct mm-hmm. opponent, uh, Hugo Vettelson, uh, number 10. And I think he just, he he, he strolled forward without challenge for yeah. a considerable okay. distance before popping out to the left. Um, you know, they've played it well. You know, the left wing on the overlap have played it well. And they've the ball shouldn't it back be in as well. Pardon? The ball shouldn't be coming in from the left wing. 
Too no. easy, yeah. And he's clipped it. And the guy's controlled his finish well. It's a nice finish from, you know, clearly a good footballer. But he's ha- ha- you know hardly had to break sweat or break stride, Joe. There's just nobody anywhere near him. Ah, it's a simple case of ball watching. I mean, he's just, he's so... I mean, he drifts over to the same side. I think between Scales, Welsh and Beaton, they're all sort of trying to block the same ball. And then all of a sudden... I mean, you can see it when you watch the replay. Beaton turned around and he goes, oh, that's my man there. And it just goes out and scores. And it's just... There he's there and it's now 5-1. Oh, it's just just basic defending. It's basic just marking your man. I don't... There's nothing really else to it. It's not... I mean, he's just... He just follows the ball. Yeah. It's just really poor. You can accept when teams tear you apart, you know, if you're playing a top European side. And I do think both are a good side. I don't think they're top, top level. But if a team tears you apart and, you know, they've got individual brilliance and different things, you go, do you know what? That's just, you know, one of those things and that's where we are. They've not had to work too hard for any of their goals, actually. You could cut through all five of them. And it is pretty galling that there's five to count, James. But, you know, they've, they've not torn strips off us, really, you know, at any point. Or they've certainly not had to work too hard to get their rewards. Yeah, when you go back to Rogers' days and you're getting a 5 nil tanking off the PSG at home and all that stuff, then... You can kind of go look at the quality that's there. You know, it was, it was terrifying to watch. You're not really seeing that. You know, you're, you're just seeing guys who, you know, decent, got a good manager, they're well structured, well organised, well disciplined, they stick to their game well. That, that's about it. But, you know, most football teams in the world could get to that kind of level in terms of just being disciplined, structured, organised, and a decent bit of tactics. Yeah. So, you know, we've, we've not played world beaters. I think they'll do okay in the tournament. But as soon as they come up against any kind of quality, um, they'll, they'll fall. What annoys me really is that we had a good look at them last week and we knew where their gaps were and it took us until about 60 minutes to start you know, probing them. Yeah. I mean, the whole ethos, you know, of Ange and, and how he likes to play, Joe, is this whole, we don't stop, we never stop, we keep working. And he's mentioned in the last few weeks that hard work is at the core of everything he does and everything he wants his team to do. And I think you'd have to say that we just did not work hard enough. Certainly, certainly for the first half, you can you can take that as one huge chunk of this tie that we've just not competed. And actually, when you look at the goal in the second half and some other moments after that, obviously the goal really takes the wind out your sails. And if there was any doubt about that tie, they were extinguished at that point. But the hard work has got to be a it's a fundamental, and you don't need to be the best football in the world. And near beat on isn't the best football in the world. You know we know his limitations, but there's no excuse for not giving your tank and giving your all for the team and you can't say that you know not enough guys gave their tank for the team tonight I don't think so and I mean if Angie's line is we don't stop for you to stop you need to start first I mean I don't <laughs> think we actually <laughs> straight but straight away I mean I thought we were really really flat I mean we just invited pressure for the first whistle yeah. and I think that Albeit, you know, we still were pressing and we were, you know, chasing them in packs of three or four in their own box. But, I mean, the amount of times that they just played through us. Now, yeah. albeit there was a few occasions where, I don't know if it was their left back or their right back, but, I mean, the amount of times that Neil Beaton got the ball and it, they weren't really put under that much pressure. Mm-hmm. That was your moment to sort of take advantage and, you know, keep the ball in their half and just sort of try and probe them and, you know, even just forced a corner. I don't think we had a corner, one corner that full game, and it never and it come from the first half anyway. I definitely don't think we did. You might be right. Um, first half. I know we did. Second the first half, half. Uh, second half we did actually. Um, but I mean, first half we never. The reason we never got a corner is because we never had the byline and we never really had any sort of possession in their own box, other than yeah. you know lucky headers or just really badly missed chances, but. I think, again, it just points to, I think Rogic and O'Reilly playing there is, and it's clearly Angie's philosophy that they play those sort of two attack-minded midfielders in that midfield three, but, I mean, they were just playing through us, so it's it's just frustrating. It it, it clearly didn't work last week, and just to persevere, I don't know, I I thought it was quite puzzling. You know, that aside as well, you know, the tie is absolutely dead in the water at 2-0 on the night, Um, but despite that, James, correct me if I'm wrong, the Maeda chance, the one that he's blazed over the bar, was that at 2-0 or was that at 1-0? 1-0. Uh, it's just before yeah. the second goal. That's a huge chance, isn't it? Yeah, and, you know, I think it was just off, off camera we were talking about this. I, I think he's 
lacking confidence himself. He's feeling a bit of pressure and it's, it's not quite clicking. He's played a full season of football, blah, blah, blah. But footballers should be scoring chances like that, you know. Um, yeah. It's it's just there for him. And if he gets that, Joe, you said before we came on, if he gets that, a lot of stuff starts to click for him. The weight comes off his shoulders. He starts to play with a bit of freedom. So I'm not concerned about him as a player, um, but he's got to be scoring that. Yeah. As a player and as a teammate, he puts in a serious shift. I clocked it at several points in the first half. He was really bombing about and working hard. And actually, I think it was 90 or 91st minute of the game. He was still, you know, you putting the shift in. But the quality's got to be there as well. It's, you know, I spoke about how it's a fundamental. You've got to work hard. Of course it is. But you need to have some ability to add to that as well. And I think Maeda has got that. But he, yeah, he certainly needs to start bringing more of that to the table and playing with more confidence. I mean, that chance, you just, you know, you never know what could happen. Abad is another chance as well, I think, certainly 2-0. But, you know, over the piece, we have had chances in the tie, despite being, you know, outplayed for for long spells. And we've just not, you know, taken advantage at any point, Joe. We haven't. Um, I think definitely tonight, there was a lot more chances, a lot of, like, really golden opportunities. At, sort of, as you said earlier on, sort of times in the game where we aren't playing well and maybe... That's what we need to sort of give us that we lift that we, you know, we could have got at half time. But I mean, if you're going to get the tie at one each at half time, it's just a totally different game. Team talk's completely different. Changes might have been the same because I don't, we still weren't playing well. But I mean, all it takes is for that goal. And I think, I mean, Maeda's chance in the second half, I, I don't really know. Now, again, it's coming from, coming from me, but. When you're looking at it, I don't really know why he was aiming for like, the top corner and going for a one-on-one with it. He's essentially one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. He's not really getting MD at his back. Yeah. Any, I mean, any player with confidence has a back composure there and sort of, you know, picks his corner. But yeah. clearly that's that's some sort of an issue just now. He's and Abad is unlucky Sorry, as well, I think. Yeah, I was just going to say that um, Maida is a guy who's just in the back of, I think, a 24-goal top scorer season in the J-League. He knows how to put the ball in the net. You know, so I don't know if there's a bit yeah. of anxiety there. He's trying to catch it early, surface, whatever. I mean, quick point, James Ange also, you know, decided not to train on that surface. Is that the right call? Is that a bit of arrogance? So, nah, I, I, I put it on the line that I don't think Ange is an arrogant guy. I think he does what's right for the game. So, any kind of commentators, no, you're not saying that, but any commentators with that, I think they're way to the mark. Um, before the match, I was like, if that's Angie's call, then fair enough. You know, maybe he doesn't need that. I think he actually did uh, play a part because he saw just around about Starsfield's chance in the, the first half. A couple of minutes before that and for the rest of that, that period, we were coming into the game. It took us about 35, 40 minutes to get a feel for the pitch, a feel for the ball, the pace of it all, all that kind of stuff. And I just wonder if you've got a bit of time on that last night, a wee bounce game or whatever, you've got an immediate read on how this surface is going to play tomorrow. So... Yeah. Maybe that's a misstep. He's been doing the game a lot longer than I have, but it might have made a difference. Yeah. I just think, you know, that there's such a, a mix of artificial surfaces out there and, and no two are generally the same. So Bodo isn't necessarily the same as Livy. It's the same as Hamilton Ackies and all that kind of stuff. But and I just thought, I think you should have trained on it. I really do. I don't think Angie's arrogant either, but I do think you, you should have trained on it. Just to give the players a feel for it. Even just take a half hour run out. A wee bounce game or something like that. Yeah. But anyway, by the by, it's not the reason we've lost the tie. I just thought it was an interesting yeah. uh, point as an aside. Joe, looking at the bigger picture, so obviously we now don't have Europe to worry about, um, not through choice. We've got Hibs on Sunday, 12 o'clock kickoff, and really now it's all eyes on the league, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Um, I mean, at the start of the season, that was sort of all you're asking. I mean, was never mind a team to be sort of competitive, but. I mean, now from now the end of the season, it just has to be a priority. And the pro this is the problem with being at Celtic as well, that albeit you've come off a really, really disappointing result, performance, it's just a matter of you need one on Sunday. I mean, you, you, you need one. It's, mm -hmm. There's no off days, there's nothing, no excuses. You just need to you know, forget about it and move on. And it's yeah. it's such a big game. There's no there's no hiding place now, James, because you can't make all those changes and not then go and take all three points at Easter Road. Otherwise, your you know your your stock starts to dip just a wee bit. So you'd fully expect Juranovic's, Hatati's, um, Jota's, McGregor's all to start, wouldn't you? And Celtic really need to come back and and turn the screw now. And listen, the domestic form has been fantastic, so you can't do anything more than 
keep doing what you're doing at home. But I think, to a huge extent, Celtic now owes a performance. They owe something domestically because there's people have travelled there in, in really tough conditions tonight. And I know there's a bigger picture that play and Angie's job is to balance the squad and you know decide when to take risks and, and what to prioritise. But there are a lot of folk who have travelled there with a bit of hope tonight. The start lineup leaves them with you know not much to go on, and we now really need to step up league wise and show over these remaining eleven games. I think it is what we're really made of. Yeah, if you want to take what we've spoken about in the show so far as what had to be spoken about was a very poor performance in Europe, and now you take the point of the here now and where we are, how we go forward, and this is where you can start to look at the silver lining or the clarity that you get from. Well, that's not in the way, and I don't need to worry about the tie after that and after that because this is it. I've got these 11 league games, I've got the d right in the Cup and see where that goes. But you can really start to see clear focus for the way ahead. So, yeah, there, there is a silver lining now we've dealt with, you know, talking about the game. And it is just that. It's it's Sunday, get that game dealt with, you know, pay the fans back and all that stuff to, to a certain extent. But you try to tell me the guys over on Bodar aren't a good time right now? Right now? They'll be having a, a lovely time. time. I did see a tweet, something like, reimburse these guys they've all gone and spent dough and you've got to reimburse them for that performance that's a wee bit of fantasy talk because you're not going to get payback every time you you lose your games and I'm sure they'll be consolidating themselves in the nearest uh, Irish karaoke bar somewhere out in Bodo yeah. Joe just as we start nine quarter pint though <laughs> <laughs> at nine quarter pint I don't think so <laughs> I know uh, just as we start to wrap things up Joe any final thoughts either on today or just the, the bigger picture um, ah, disappointing I thought I thought this was maybe a chance, you know. I was I was too young for Seville. I thought maybe there's a wee chance that we'd run at something, but clearly not. Well, I think well, it was a bit of a reality check in terms of where we're at, in terms of squad depth, in terms of how we fare against teams that are sort of similar in level, if not sort of below a level. Um, but again, league's always a priority. Just dust ourselves off, go on a Sunday, and hopefully we can sort of go back and oh really good run yeah uh, James Joe obviously getting the wee dig in there about the age um, felt it felt yeah. it sore <laughs> never missed it you were you were, you were at Seville and then so did you not celebrate your 40th in Seville 40th no? in Seville eh? yeah. Yeah. Um, but any final thoughts from yourself no I just I, I think there is a difference here in this kind of defeat you know I've seen to get beaten Europe off of lesser teams to use the Lenny Fingers uh, many times and a lot of times I've kind of come away from th- them thinking just disappointment. I genuinely feel with Ange that there's stuff to be learned in defeat. I think he takes it and he uses it going forward, whether it be changing the squad, improving the squad from within, developing guys and all that kind of stuff. So I think we'll learn from tonight. We'll learn from our European journey this season and we'll take that into next year. And now the, the real business starts of getting this title back. Yeah, definitely. And I think we've all got to accept, and I think most folk do, that this is very much a, a work in progress under Ange. I think under other regimes, other, under man, other managers, you might be concerned as to, is this going to be the pattern? Will this be the norm? But I've no doubt Celtic will now go all out to deal with that problematic left-back situation and maybe some other key positions across the park. Uh, hopefully, we'll see the return of guys like Kyogo as well. And you know, one of the comments I never brought up is someone says Kyogo finishes those chances all day long, and he I'm does. I mentioned that it's a, it's a game changer, Kyogo. Yeah, and that's where you feel the quality in games like this. So there's lots of positives. However, on the night, as Joe says, it is disappointment. So Celtic lose out two 0 on the night, five one in aggregate. As a sore one, you know, it's a first time I've asked in this year for Conference League, and we've not covered ourselves in glory. However, all eyes do now turn to Sunday, Hibs at 12 o'clock at Easter Road in the league. Thanks to Joe and James for joining me today. Thanks to everyone who's joined the live here. Thanks to everyone who's commented. If you get a second as well, please do subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. But in the meantime, as always, thanks for tuning in.